probably about five years into being a SEAL. I'm coming in in the night in a, on a little coastal area in Greece, and uh, we don't really know how big the waves are because we can't see them. And uh, there's three boats, bigger rubber boats with engines, and we come in there, and then we start feeling these swells lifting us up, and we're going down, and the swells are getting bigger, we're going, oh boy. The elevator rides, you know, like 12, 13 feet, and you go back down, and then we get here up in front of us. We are aiming for a beach that we missed because the swells were taking us to the left, and we ended up in about four lines of breakers. All three boats flipped. We all swam, washed, survived our way towards the beach. And when we got there, you know, the boats, everything's tied into the boats, the boats washed up. And we were on a, um, a beach that was probably about 25 or 30 yards wide and about 20 yards deep. And then there was a rock cliff in the shape of a, shape of a, of a sea, a rock cliff all the way around the beach. There was no way to get off the beach other than back into the ocean. And and it was wasn't terribly cold. Windy. It was probably you know 50 degrees, but it was a steady hard wind because of the storm that caused the waves. And uh, we're all sitting there shaking like a bunch of little kittens. And there's nothing we can do. Um, we can't really do anything until the sun comes up, and we got to wait till the, the waves go down. And we can't climb the cliffs because these were really high cliffs. And so within about I don't know an hour, we started getting hypothermia, and we all started jogging. So we jogged for about nine or ten hours. We just jogged all of us going back and forth just to try to stay warm, telling stories or not talking at all. But you couldn't sit down. Or, you know. But those waves and coming into that rock cliff, magnitudes worse than what I had to do in buds.